Hello YouTube viewers, this is Eric Reinhold. I'm going to show you today how to use free software in order to build a, well as close as we can get, to a production accurate version of the USS Enterprise from the original series. I'm showing you some samples of my renders of my current model, which I have rendered in Blender 3D. And you can see how that model looks uh, and whether or not you think I got at least close to what the original model looked like uh, on the series. My favorite version of the uh, Enterprise model is probably the, the production model uh, as seen during the second season. There were actually multiple versions of the uh, USS Enterprise model. And for this discussion, I'm limiting uh, our chat and our model making to a representation of the 11 foot model. There were actually several versions, not only of the 11 foot model, but of other models used for filming in the original series, including uh, a three foot model, which was used as kind of a, a test to show Gene Roddenberry what the final larger model would look like. Uh, there are some subtle, though uh, definite differences between that model and the 11 foot model. Um, there were uh, at least three sets of changes, if not more, to the 11-foot model. <clears throat> the pilot, uh, which is commonly referred to as the cage, but actually would have been renamed the menagerie. Later on, the title, the menagerie, got used for a two-part episode where they used uh, significant sections of that pilot in a story uh, during the first season. Uh, there was a, there were changes made to the model for the second pilot, which is uh, entitled Where No Man Has Gone Before, including uh, changes to the uh, warp engines and some changes to the bridge section of the model and uh, the sensor dish in front. And then all of that uh, got more changes, including uh, changes on the details on the upper saucer for production purposes for when they started making episodes starting with the Corbomite maneuver which was the first episode uh, created uh, they made significant changes and Gene Roddenberry wanted uh, what looked like <clears throat> a grid uh, on the ship uh, that uh, which he used to explain uh, the ship's shields he thought the shields would be generated by that grid. The people who made the model and uh, the designer actually didn't want external details on the ship. Uh, Matt Jeffries, the gentleman who uh, designed the ship, thought that it would be ridiculous to put working components on the exterior of the ship in the harsh environment of space. He thought everything would be internalized, but of course that's fairly boring for the viewers. So they they did a compromise. Back with the broadcast uh, detail in the 1960s, they knew that subtle detail wouldn't show up, or at least wouldn't show up well. So they went and they drew the grid, the uh, shield grid on the uh, saucer of the ship with pencils. So Gene Roddenberry could walk up, see the model, and even see the dailies, and he saw that shield grid and said it was good. <clears throat> but it barely even showed up during broadcast. Now, with DVDs and Blu-ray re uh, resolution, we can actually see that grid, that shield grid, uh, for what it was, plus some very subtle paint details, all of which I'll show you where to get uh, images that you can look at and you can determine what version of the ship you want to make. I'll show you where to get blueprints and so on. Uh, the different uh, sets of blueprints that I like to refer to, uh, there, there are several out there that are very good, uh, including a set of uh, USS Enterprise blueprints uh, created based on, <coughs> pardon me, based on the original series, but were not actually used for the original series. Uh, however, I like uh, David Shaw's uh, research, Alan Sinclair's, and uh, Charles Casimiro. Uh, I'm going to use Alan Sinclair's for this demonstration. However, a mix of the three would be great, and I'll even show you some of the subtle differences now. I'm going to pop up Adobe Photoshop. This is a 
uh, one-on-one uh, representation of one of David Shaw's uh, study drawings for the 11-foot model and uh, to show you some of the differences between his and uh, other other blueprints or study drawings. Uh, the blue here is from Charles Casimiro's uh, research. Uh, Charles Casimiro and um, uh, David Shaw both like really sharp edges on things. But of course, there's no such thing as a truly sharp edge when you're building something. This is uh, tr um, Alan Sinclair in red here. This is Alan Sinclair's uh, outline for <coughs> how he thought the uh, model was built. And a fellow by the name of Gary Kerr, who's probably got the most accurate measurements out there uh, for anybody, his drawings, uh, as best as I can align them, look like this. So they're all extremely, extremely similar. We'll use the uh, Alan Sinclair uh, model because the plans are readily available. They are extremely close to what uh, David Shaw and uh, Gary Kerr uh, also uh, said that the model looked like. And uh, now I'll launch a Blender and I'll show you that. Blender 3D is 3D software that is used to uh, allow you to build whatever you want in 3D. Um, it has, a, a lot of people describe the interface as extremely difficult. I'm one of them. Um, it took a long time for me to uh, learn to use this. I have used other software in the past. <coughs> uh, when I first started out, I started off using a program called TrueSpace, um, which I believe Microsoft wound up buying and then abandoning. You can still out there somewhere in a repository find a copy uh, of uh, TrueSpace, uh, probably one of the later versions, and uh, you could give it a go with that. However, uh, they stopped. The last version of TrueSpace was TrueSpace 7. It was pretty much bloatware, at least at the time. Uh, probably modern computers would be able to handle it <clears throat> much better. Uh, however, Blender 3D, free software, uh, created uh, originally by uh, Toon Rosendahl, uh, is much more capable than TrueSpace ever was, even with its latest version. Uh, I have also used LightWave. Uh, I have used uh, Autodesk. I've used Maya 3D uh, and even other software like Wings 3D. And then there are various renderers and so on. However, Blender is pretty much a total package. You can make video games with Blender. You can make 3D models. You can render movies. It has a movie editor within it. Uh, it has a, a, a right now with version 2.7, uh, what? Uh, trying to remember, 2.79. <clears throat> uh, matter of fact, 2.79B is the latest version. And down below uh, in the description, if you'll expand that, I've got a lot of references, including where you can get Blender, where you can get uh, uh, software to edit and create textures. Uh, I'm going to recommend GIMP because it's free. I like Adobe Photoshop. <coughs> Pardon me, an old version of Adobe Photoshop. So uh, depending on how long this goes, I may show you how to use uh, uh, GIMP to create something like what I am going to put apply to my model. Um, I, won't, I won't give you the model when we're done, but... If you follow step by step and uh, look down in the description, you can get the uh, locations for the blueprints that I talked about. They are free. Uh, you can get, if you do a little research on your own, you can find probably additional uh, details. I'm also going to include the uh, several links to the restoration of the 11 foot model by the uh, National Aeronautics and Space Museum, uh, and which Gary Kerr was actually one of the fellows who uh, contributed. He's uh, had a lifelong love of the uh, of Star Trek and the USS Enterprise model, like many of us. And he has uh, contributed a tremendous amount of research, and he has been lucky enough to actually gain 
to actually gain access to the model several times and measure it. Uh, he keeps getting more and more accurate measurements and collaborates with other other people who have been famously working on Star Trek uh, for decades, um, including, uh, uh, I think it's uh, Petrie uh, uh, Bloomquist, who uh, built the 3D model that was used for the Star Trek remastered episodes because he has been building his model and tuning it uh, for years. In any case, you'll have access to all of that. I'll give you uh, links to uh, that are current as of the creation on, on the 8th of July of 2018. Uh, these links are all good, <clears throat> and you can get... Uh, screen captures of, uh, in other words, screenshots from the DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, I will not include the remastered stuff, although the, they'll be available at the same site, because the remastered stuff is, of course, a 3D interpretation, uh, and no doubt there are some slight errors involved in it. So my recommendation is to take pictures of the actual model if you can get them and i've got links for that uh, or screen captures from the show and we're going to try and make a screen accurate version of the model i will also show uh keystrokes and so on as i am going along in blender this is all going to be at a at a really basic level an introductory level for making models uh, and I will move up to, I don't know, maybe a, a medium or a medium low level in making uh, some things in here that we are not going to do advanced sculpting or anything along, along those lines. Uh, I may at the very end include how to do some basic animation, uh, including how to animate the, uh, the blinking lights and, and the spinning rotors inside the warp engines and how to make flyby shots of the ship and so on. I'll explain my rationale for what I do uh, when I do it. And it's probably going to wind up being a series of these videos. Anyway, this is the intro. And the very next video, uh, I'm going to show you how to start using Blender 3D. Download your copy and uh, download whatever references you want. Grab whatever blueprints you want to use. As I said, we're, we'll be using the Allen Sinclair blueprints. But this should be, uh, this should be easy to follow no matter whose set of blueprints you use. Um, thank you for your attention, and on to the second video.